So an impressive CV, thank you very much for the introduction. So uh, it, it um, saves me explaining my role. A key thing that I really wanted to get across before I do the presentation was uh, I'm also a practitioner. So um, I'm not just doing uh, consulting work or architecture work, I was the CTO for Heathrow. So those of you who uh, fly via Heathrow, Capgemini runs all the IT at Heathrow and I was the CTO at Heathrow. And I had had uh, the opportunity to work on various different uh, big clients in the past. And all the clients have uh, a lot of the themes in common, i.e. speed, agility, flexibility, and cost. And I want to cover those two key things during my 35 minutes, just talk about uh, DevOps in an IT for IT context and give you some ideas and some suggestions in terms of the material that you can find in the IT, IT, IT for IT forum. Now, when I talk about DevOps, I typically say uh, DevOps is a bit like rugby. I don't know, I hope all of you know what rugby is. It's almost like football, it's just a different ball. Um, rugby, in theory, is, is very simple, because all you have to do is you have to take the ball, you have to get it across the line to score. Um, and so it seems, for DevOps, it's the same, because a lot of people nowadays are talking about DevOps, are saying, well, if you want to be faster, if you want to reduce outages, you do use DevOps. But for those of you who have applied the DevOps concept, uh, it can be rather difficult and rather tricky. And so it is with rugby. If you play rugby yourself, you find it very quickly that's quite difficult to take a ball and score uh, a point. So I wanted to cover three things. First, uh, just wanted to give you an overview over DevOps. Second, uh, articulate a bit the challenges in a DevOps context. They're quite high level, they're not technical. And then thirdly, give you some, again, some ideas, some hints and tips of the material that we have produced over the years in an IT, IT, IT for IT forum from a DevOps perspective. Um, I'll call it as well, very nice. So if I go on to the overview, there we are. Um, first of all, DevOps is not a product. DevOps isn't something you can buy. You can't go to a shop and say, give me half a kilo of DevOps, or I'd like you know, 2,000 licenses of a DevOps solution. DevOps is a, is a philosophy, DevOps is an approach, um, and DevOps, and that's really important, and that's why it fits uh, spot into the IT for IT uh, concept, because you talked about before, you heard about before, the business value point. It's about driving real business value. So DevOps is really uh, positioned to help organizations to drive value, um, and it's typically about speed and, of course, outage reduction, but more on that later. You see, often nowadays, um, people saying that um, you, if you implement a tool, like those of you have probably heard of Docker, or uh, Puppet, or Chef, um, all these new tools that are now appearing in the market, if you apply them, you have DevOps. It's a bit true, but there's a large part that is still missing. Because you only implemented the tool, you're still missing the process and the people side. But again, more on that a bit later in the slide deck. Um, DevOps is, uh, I, I've been in IT for 26 years, I always find it fascinating. Um, it's actually something that has been around for a while, but some clever clock created this, this concept of the term DevOps. Uh, a bit like when cloud was appearing, uh, we all did virtualization many, many years ago. For those of you who worked on mainframe, we used LPAS, logical partitions, we virtualized the mainframe in the 70s and the 80s. Somebody said in the, in the 2000s, now we're doing cloud, and everybody thought, oh, there's something new. It's a bit like DevOps as well. DevOps was coined in 2009, and uh, it was really kind of uh, created by, by, by a couple of chaps who thought, well, uh, we really need to break down this barrier, this, uh, this, this, this wall of confusion, they call it, between development and operations. Uh, we really need to make sure that people who are develop, developing code are actually also doing it with operations in mind. Um, and not just focusing on the functional aspects of a solution. And when you are uh, deploying tools into a live environment, that you actually consider all the aspects. Um, and if it fails, well, you don't just try it again in six months' time. You try to find and identify the root causes. So we're really trying to, uh, we're really trying to get to, uh, to the bottom of um, some of the outages or the issues that we see when we're delivering uh, applications or we're, when we're deploying code into live. Uh, DevOps can, can drive significant value. That's where, what you actually should be starting with, never mind how you implement it or what tools you should be deploying. Let's first focus a bit on the, the value proposition of DevOps. Well, um, Puppet Labs did a, a survey, uh, and they issued this as a result for the survey, I think, from 2015. 
And they found that there are two key value propositions for organization for deploying a DevOps approach. First is agility, so speed, and second is reliability. So they have found this is the material, the outcome from the report, you can get the report online, um, where they found that you can almost do uh, 8,000 faster deployment times, sorry, lead times than peers, or you can um, uh, increase the frequency of deployment by 30 times, or uh, you can also increase your reliability by two, or you mean time to recover by 12 times. Um, they also th thought that um, these are kind of the, the, the primary objectives or the primary business cases or um, the primary applications for DevOps, agility and reliability. And they found that organizations who use a DevOps approach can typically also get a secondary objective or target, which is more competitiveness i.e. having the ability to grow their market share or having the ability to penetrate their market better because they're using a DevOps approach. Uh, when you look at the um, business cases, or so these are kind of the outcomes, typically you see four key business cases for DevOps implementation, um, two of which are, I guess, the, the most prevalent ones, but still four are really important from a DevOps perspective. First is the agility side, so uh, DevOps has been applied in context areas where you want to be faster, if you want to speed up, you want to speed up your deployment. Secondly is about increasing quality, so a lot of organizations nowadays are using a DevOps approach to improve quality. Third, if you're using tools to automate, so you free up your staff for manual labor or manual intensive labor activity, you actually free them up to do some thinking. So you can, increase your rev you can increase your innovation cycles because you have more people thinking about better ways of uh, doing certain activities or uh, newer product cycles, for instance. And then the last point is around reducing an outages. So typically you see um, um, that 80%, these are statistics or numbers that you can get from Forrester or Gartner, 80% of all outages are change-related. So uh, only 20% of outages in a data center are related to failure, hardware failure or power uh, failure. 80% is down to change-related outages. So when you are deploying code into live or you're making changes to your application, an outage of an application is typically caused by this. Um, and DevOps is really trying to, uh, or organization are using DevOps to take that 80% down to maybe 40% or to 30 or to 20. And within that is a huge amount of value for organizations, in particular organizations that have very customer-facing applications or services. You can imagine if an application isn't available, uh, the impl implication from a direct product perspective or the indirect implications can be significant for a bank, for instance. So cost avoidance is a big question or a quick, uh, big objective for organizations, or banking particularly, and the reduced, out reduced outages is typically something that they uh, focus on when they are deploying uh, a DevOps deployment or a DevOps approach. Um, when, you, <laughs> when you talk about DevOps, a lot of people focus on the uh, agility part. That's quite good. Um, that's certainly one key aspect. And it's quite interesting when you sometimes compare the various different organizations from their agility perspective to see you know, how, where you want to be from an organizational perspective. Many organizations, that's typically where, uh, where I worked in as well, we used to identify requirements, you develop uh, solutions, you test solutions, you deploy them, or you follow the ITF IT framework. And that typically takes six to 12 months, and then you deploy a big release every quarter, every half a year. Obviously, with DevOps, you're trying to shrink this. You're trying to shrink this not, from a, uh, not just from a duration perspective, but also shrink it from a cycle perspective. So you try not to have a release maybe every quarter. You may have a release every week or maybe have a release every day. The question is, where do you want to be? If you look at organizations nowadays, um, these are numbers um, that I found from the internet when Amazon did a presentation um, and Google as well. They do 20,000 deployments um, per day. So these are 20,000 changes in life per day. Uh, their Amazon website is all based on microservices, uh, and they are making changes to all their applications every day. Um, you may look and say, that's a bit weird. Can I really do this? Well, <laughs> I don't work for Amazon. I can't really vouch for it. But um, when I did a, a co-presentation with, uh, with one of the Amazon lead architects, uh, they were showing me the way they uh, approach a solution lifecycle, very different to um, what I guess we're all used to. 
Google do uh, about 5,000, Netflix about three to 500 a day. And then you have your Facebook, Twitter, and then your typical organizations. The question is, if you want to deploy a DevOps approach, where do you want to be? Do you need to be uh, releasing uh, changes to your live organization or application environment every second, every minute, every hour, or is a day, is a week, is a month sufficient? So it's not so much to, to question or to say, well, you agree or disagree with these numbers. It's more to, to say, OK, where do you need to be? What are your requirements from a, res, uh, res, res, sorry, a release perspective? What are your requirements from a deployment perspective? Um, and it has a big impact on the tools and the way you need to employ or deploy a DevOps approach. As clearly, if you want to be a Amazon-like, well, you have to probably follow the same um, footpath as Amazon is doing or Google and Netflix. But if you say, well, every week is OK, and I'm currently every year or every half a year, then still that will apply a certain level of changes um, to your organization from a people and process perspective. But it's quite important to know when you, when you have a DevOps approach in, approach in mind and you want to uh, deploy these tools and techniques uh, in your organization. Um, I mentioned these three things before, and that's also really important. Um, a lot of material you see nowadays um, in the market focuses a lot on the right-hand side. Um, many, many organizations are saying, you know, you want to deploy a DevOps approach, use a tool. Um, a tool is good, but only a tool will give you maybe automa uh, um, automatic approaches or will uh, reduce your manual activities in your environment. You also need to think about uh, the process. So how do you actually deploy uh, code into life? And more importantly, probably, and that goes back to the first picture I showed you, more importantly is probably the people side. And more importantly is to help the people to take down this wall of confusion, to stop the, the separation between development and life, uh, to stop the, uh, the inertia that you sometimes have in an organization uh, when you are deploying changes in your, in your life environment. So you need to focus on those three key things when you want to deploy a DevOps approach. So this was a very quick nine minutes run down through a, a high level view on DevOps. So I uh, just showed you quickly the four key business cases for DevOps. So remember Agile and Outage Reduction. And then the, the three key aspects of DevOps, which is people, process, and tools. Now, DevOps challenges, there are uh, typically two challenges or two angles you can see or you can have a look at, uh, at employing or deploying a DevOps approach. Uh, you typically see it from an outside-in perspective, uh, which stops you from using DevOps, and an inside-out perspective, which we call, or I call, inside-out challenges. Um, within the outside-in challenges, typically what stops you from deploying DevOps, or when you want to speed up, or you want to reduce outages, what stops you from, from doing or deploying these tools are typically complex settings in your pre-production or your project, and, uh, your pro pro your project environment. Uh, which leads to an issue when you have uh, error um, identification or error prevention, because it's very hard to identify what the root causes are when you have an outage in life. You know, quite often you hear or you see uh, an issue causes in life or an outage in life, and you go to the developer and you say to the developer, this code isn't working. The developer is saying, well, it works on my laptop. So there's typically, of course, a difference between pre-production and production. And if you want to speed up, if you want to address outages, then you need to find a way of addressing these two key points, complexity and the issue of finding root cause analysis or doing root cause analysis. Um, there's also this, uh, what I mentioned before, the wall of confusion. Uh, again, if you want to speed up, if you want to reduce outages, you need to make sure that you are addressing the people side. So typically you have the development team in one IT organization probably reporting completely differently to your uh, operational div uh, division. Sometimes operational division for um, organizations might report to the CFO, maybe the developer uh, reports to a completely different functional uh, division. And you need to adjust this when you are deploying a DevOps um, approach. And the last point, which is something we all have to battle with, is the speed of innovation. Uh, the stuff that is changing every week, every month, um, is mind-boggling at the moment. So if you are running implementation program for DevOps. So say, for instance, you have a task in your organization to speed up your deployment from six months to every week and also to reduce your outages by 50%. Then one of the challenges that you will have next to complexity, the diagnosis, and the siloedness of your organization is the speed of innovation. 
because you need to deal with these new tools and techniques that are appearing almost every week. Next to that is a, a couple of uh, inside-out challenges. So uh, again, imagine you have this, 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 this task to, uh, to speed up and to reduce outages for your organization. Well, first of all, your organization may not really understand what DevOps is. Um, there are plentiful of uh, definitions of DevOps currently. Uh, you'll see later uh, the open group definition of DevOps that we have suggested so far. Um, but there are many different definitions for DevOps. Uh, Gartner will have one, Forrester has one, IDC has one, organizations have one, technology vendors like Capgemini have one. We all have our own view on DevOps. That is in itself a big challenge when you are deploying a DevOps approach in your organization. Tools connected with innovation. Um, again, if you, if you look at the open source markets, uh, there are tools coming out every day. So when you, are, uh, when you think, ah, I've got my head around Dev, uh, Docker or Puppet and Chef, and now I know how all these things hang together, your boss may come up to you and say, well, have you worked with this? And you say, no, mm, you may not be on the, uh, the latest and the greatest. So you need to deal with the DevOps tool cocktail, of the tools that you can deploy um, your speed and your uh, reduction in outages. And then there's a big question, and that is, again, related to for, for IT for IT, is the big bang versus step by step. So how do you approach an implementation of tools, technologies, and people changes when you want to speed up or you want to reduce outages? Do you do, do it in one big uh, bang, or do you want to do it in step by step? And you also have the current changes in your organization. So when you are deploying a DevOps change in your organization, you have all the other projects still running. You may have... Uh, I don't know, a desktop refreshment program, you may have a relocation of a data center, a deployment of a cloud solution. Whilst you're doing all this, you are trying to reduce outages and you're trying to speed up the organization. So there's a lot of uh, issues and challenges and constraints that you have to deal with uh, when you're deploying a DevOps um, activity or a DevOps approach. So how can IT for IT help? Well, first of all, there is a, a material available. So um, and most of the material that I show you now is taken from uh, Agile Scenarios. It's a white paper that we've issued in March. Um, there's a link on the deck, or you can get a link from the, uh, from the website. So this is t directly taken from the paper. First of all, of course, you have, uh, when you look at uh, uh, these two objectives that I mentioned, agility and reducing in outages, or reduction in outages, one key thing that you clearly need in your organization is a standard way of running your IT. So many organizations, or every single organization, have, has a different definition for their solution lifecycle, for their deployment approach. Uh, I worked with one client that called it go to, uh, go to production. The other one called it um, run into life. Um, every single organization has a different methodology and a different dictionary for the features and the functions that they employ or deploy from going from requirements gathering or strategy down into implementation. And you, know, you heard it before, the key value of IT for IT gives you that framework. And that framework is the first start. It doesn't give you the answer. By deploying the framework, you don't get DevOps directly out of the box, but it gives you at least a framework to, uh, to work against. And that's very important when you're focusing on reducing outages or when you want to speed up uh, deployment from left to right which DevOps is, is all about. Um, here's the definition of DevOps. So this is a, a white paper suggested um, definition. Um, so it was issued in February in 2016. And here's the, uh, the words that I, I used before when I explained to you uh, the DevOps approach. But first of all, DevOps is a way of collaborating and industrializing using highly automated approaches. And it's deploy, it, to deploy solutions that evolve as fast as your business needs it. So it's really important to see the, the connection between the business outcome and the, uh, the activities of deploying solutions in a collaborative and industrializing way. And we said in the paper that by adopting uh, DevOps, organization can, of course, improve value delivered by its business. Again, really important, the value proposition from a business perspective. So not so much IT-centric, it's value to the business. And it does that by tearing down these traditional silos and using, um, I guess, the IT for IT framework to really connecting the various different parts of an organization. Again, you can take that directly from the, uh, sorry, from the Agile white paper. So it's the Agile Scenarios white paper. Um, 
the words are really important, so you have to see that if you look at DevOps, it's not so much, it's not just the tool side, it's the people, the process side, and it's the, the real focus on business outcomes. The real focus on what is it you want to achieve, what is the speed you have to achieve, what is the agility side, cycle you have to achieve, and what quality aspects do you have? Now, many organizations have outages, you probably have to live with outages, but what is the kind of the level of outages that you should have in your organization that is acceptable rather than the one you have currently? Um, in, in, a, um, in a scenario where you uh, provide or you execute um, a continuous release cycle, so when you look at material in DevOps, you see when you dive into DevOps content or material, you talk usually around Agile. Um, Agile is a way of creating um, functional um, specifications or delivering functional specifications and non-functional as well. But if you really try to achieve kind of Netflix approach, so I'm not talking about you know, releasing every quarter or releasing every month, if you have the need in your organization to deploy changes on a daily or on a hourly basis, you need to do continuous integration or continuous release, release cycle. And in the um, IT for IT forum, you have material that helps you to frame your approach, so from a process perspective. Now, I mentioned before, you have people, process, and tools. Um, in IT for IT, we've defined um, guidelines and some specifications of how, of how you could do or you could um, deploy a continuous release cycle. And what we also did, and that's really important because Typically, when you see these pictures, they look very nice. You have a couple of boxes and a couple of arrows, and you think, well, okay, well, so what does that mean to me? The key value you're getting from the IT for IT is the definition of the objectives. So we spend a lot of time articulating, actually, what is the objectives, the targets, and the requirements that you should actually have against your framework. So you remember the framework that we, we specified before, the IT for IT framework. There are clear value propositions against um, each of the stages, which you see in a second. And this is really important when you talk about the value chain, because the value chain, so you have your, from your left to the right, um, your strategy down to, uh, to your deployment, uh, you really need to focus on, or you need to ide ideally focus on the key outcomes and the value propositions that sits within each of the value chain components. And that is against your people, process, and your tools. So that's really the trick when you're deploying a DevOps approach, not just considering the technology aspects, so maybe technology on your um, automatic monitoring and workload, uh, workload management might be, but well, you might be using Chef or Puppet or CA Unicenter or something. And maybe on the technology side, on the, on the strategy side, you may have some interactive or collaborative tools that helps you defining strategies in a much more uh, interactive way. We also need to do the same thing on the process and on the people side. A bit more tricky on the people side to define the, uh, the physical aspects, but People could be that you have to maybe reorganize your, your structure. You may have to co-locate. You may have to think about you know, having your developers much closer to your operational staff. I asked one of the uh, uh, organizations that I was working with uh, who started on a DevOps journey, and I asked them what was the, the main uh, value or the main thing that they deployed on the people side to get the developer to talk to the operational guy. And they said, well, what they did is they gave each of the developers a clear objective which was linked to outage. So a developer had a, business, a personal target to make sure that his code doesn't cause a certain amount of outages. If he achieves or achieves that target, he gets a certain amount. I don't know how much a bonus payment was, maybe say $500. And it is the same thing on the operational stuff. So the guy who was running the server, who had very little to do from a development perspective, had also a target from a functional perspective. So the amount of function points deployed was also his personal target. Of course, his main target was SLA and KPI, but he also had a target to make sure that there's change introduced all the time at a certain level. And um, he was also um, given a bonus. So uh, the client said they were very happy. And they're now working together because they had a personal objective of uh, getting their target so they get their money. So, of course, there's one approach to take. Another client has relocated their stuff. Um, they are working together in the same room, and they force them to talk to each other, which is a challenge in itself. You have operational guys who look down on developers because uh, 
developers don't understand functional specification, and you look at developers who look down on operational stuff because they don't understand functional specification. So there's this wall of confusion that you have to address, and that's quite a, um, an area that spend, you, you typically spend a lot of time on um, when you talk about implementing DevOps. And remember, DevOps is just a title. What's behind this are these use cases, these business cases that are specified before, namely agility and reduction in outages. And this is the material you get from the uh, Agile scenarios. Um, also within the Agile scenarios, we suggested a, a DevOps maturity model. So again, when you think about, uh, I'm in an organization, I would like to start on DevOps. Uh, sounds good. Other clients are doing it as well. Everybody's doing DevOps, so I may do it as well. I'm quite sure what it means. Um, my objective is to speed up from quarter to week, and I want to reduce my outages by 50%. Where do I start? Well, it's a great, great question to ask. Um, so we sat down, we thought, well, maybe we should specify a, a maturity model. A maturity model with a couple of steps where we have, or where we can specify characteristics uh, per step, which helps maybe guiding an implementation approach for DevOps. So I hope you can read this, it's a bit white, so apologies for this. Um, we specified a couple of levels. So first of all, we said, well, uh, level one, basic, uh, there's certain uh, characteristics defined. It gets a bit easier to read when it goes a bit higher up. So if you look at uh, the top, for instance, top level, um, there are certain um, characteristics, certain attributes that you could specify to an organization that has a top level maturity on DevOps against people, process, and tools. Again, this is just a summary. When you look at the Agile scenario, you can get a couple of pages worth of more description behind these. Um, and this can help when you're starting on your DevOps journey, you may remember uh, one of the slides I showed the outside in and the inside out challenges. So if you are, have an objective of speeding up or reducing outages, you have to have an implementation plan for DevOps, i.e. the changes that you have to do from a tools, from a process, and from a people perspective, having a maturity model which gives you kind of a compass where you want to be is really important and really helpful. Also, it may define that you don't want to be or need to be in top level. It may suffice for your organization to be maybe enhanced or maybe coordinated because you say, well, I'm okay to do a, a change every quarter. I don't need to be a Netflix or an Amazon. Uh, one of the banks, when I did a presentation to one of the, the CTO from a large organization, for a large bank, he said, absolutely not. So when I do a change in life, I personally review the change going into life. I personally I'm accountable for any failures that is caused by the changes we put into life. The last thing I want is one of these open source thingies to do deployment into life. I don't trust them. So I want to do it myself. So I'm quite happy to do a release every six weeks. Okay, fine, fair enough. So you don't, you don't have to have a full continuous integration which can do a release in 16 seconds uh, from the delivery, uh, from deployment uh, into life. But it helps, I guess, your organization or helps you to, uh, to give you a, a guidepost. And here are kind of the, uh, uh, the description of the, uh, the next level down. So if you drill into this level one uh, on the agile scenarios, this is the material you then get. I'm not going to go through the words, but it just gives you more material, uh, which helps you maybe to guide your DevOps implementation. It doesn't give you the answer. It's not going to say or it can't tell you what are the changes that you have to do in your organization to speed up but it gives you that framework, that reference model to help you to guide within the IT for IT value chain what are the, the characteristics that you should consider from a people process and from a tools perspective if you want to really speed up against maybe every quarter, every month, every day, or every hour. There's also um, a suggestion of uh, implementation approach um, again, if you look at the Agile scenario document, it's a bit more, um, so it's again taken, taken from, the, from the document. There are some, uh, some guidance or some ideas of what else you could do to speed up and to reduce outages. Now, as I mentioned before, DevOps is a term. A lot of the tools and techniques that we have deployed over the last 20 years was focused on speeding up and reducing outages, not since 2009 that we suddenly think about this in the IT industry. So there are certain aspects that are obvious, like train your stuff, very obvious in terms of automate, um, but also maybe not so in terms of strategy and architecture. And that's where IT for IT comes back in. 
So really seeing IT as a business differentiator, seeing IT as something that drives business value is in itself a key first step to getting to a much more agile organization. Because if you have an organization which sees IT as a back office function that only costs money and doesn't deliver any value, it's very hard to then work together with the business of um, increasing your speed to a live environment. If your organization, however, understands the value that you as an IT organization deliver to the business, uh, it makes it much, much easier to work together with your business to speed up and to reduce outages. And a couple of other things which are obvious in terms of reducing complexity, optimizing process, and orchestrate your, your, your activities across the life cycle um, are also uh, applicable. Okay, so, oh, sorry. Only a couple of slides left. These are uh, examples of material that you can get, get from, the, um, from the Agile scenarios. Again, uh, these are um, suggested goals. Um, you could take them as a starter for 10. So again, if your scenario is that you want to deploy uh, changes to increase your speed and reduce your outages, these are things that are in the Agile scenario uh, white paper suggested that you may want to have a look at from a goals perspective. There's also uh, a reference model. So uh, no white paper without reference model. Um, let's define all the meta models. But they are an uh, example of, uh, or this is the reference model for, uh, for the IT for IT landscape that is applicable to the DevOps context. Um, and it helps you to start from a DevOps implementation perspective. It doesn't give you, reference model is not the answer, it's not the solution. It is a reference that helps you against your implementation plan against people, tools, and process, particularly here on the tool side, of course, um, of what you have to deploy or what capabilities you'd need. And there it is, very pretty. There's a picture missing in the front, but you have the IT, uh, IT for IT Agile scenario, which was issued in February. And um, if you want to read more on the material that I just shared, uh, remember the latter part was just a summary of it, uh, then please have a look at the white paper um, or ask questions later. And that was my presentation. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. If you could just take a, a seat, we'll have a chance for just a very small number of questions uh, to keep on track. Very, very small questions, all well, about the marathon. A small number, yeah. yes. <laughs> I doubt they'll be small to answer, but uh, yes. Uh, asking the questions is uh, the Open Group uh, CTO, Dave Lounsbury. So, uh, gentlemen Great. over Hi, there. Thank you, Gunnar. Um, I'm going to take, I know we're tight on time, so I'm going to take the liberty of uh, Combining two questions here, um, so 20,000 deployments per day sounds like a great idea, but how do you tie the rate of deployment to the value for your business? And closely related to that is uh, how do you make the case for investment in the DevOps tools and people and processes to actually hit the rate you select? Great question. I think, as I mentioned before, forget the number for a second. You need to start with the business. So you really need to understand what, what is... Um, what does the business have to do to increase their footprint in the market? What does the business have to do to sell more products? Because at the end of the day, we are all here to make money, revenue and margin. So if your organization, say your organization has a market penetration of 5%, and if you had the ability to release products 50% uh, faster, your market penetration might go up to 25%. So your business case is the increase then in market penetration, which you can translate into revenue numbers. So if you could then say you, you increase your revenue by 10 million, the implementation cost might be 5 million, your, 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 your business case is there. But it's really finding and working, that's why I said at the end, it's really important that you have the relationship with the business to talk with and to the business. And the business sees you as somebody who delivers business value. Because if they look at you and say, well, I talk to you when I ask about my email address, or I talk to you when I need a new data center, but what do you know about revenue increase? What do you know about market share? So there's a really, really important point around getting IT as a partner, as a peer to and with the business. Organizations who have managed that, so where at the board level, the guy who's accountable for IT sits at the board level and has a say in the business strategy and business direction, they manage these massive penetration increases. Organizations which sees IT as a back office somewhere and, um, attached to the CFO, not to undermine the CFO or say that it's not valuable, uh, don't. So it's a really important point to, uh, to take away. Good. So um, 
how, uh, when you're doing DevOps, how do you uh, manage uh, and to implement DevOps when you've got uh, products that aren't, aren't, weren't originally designed for, you know, enterprise legacy projects or products? Products that weren't defined as... They, they, weren't, they weren't originally designed with DevOps. And oh, okay, I, I take it. So there are, um, give you an example, there is an organization that has a massive mainframe deployment on an IBM mainframe. They use Kix. For those of you, Kix is a tool on a mainframe. And um, they have had the same questions that, okay, we use all these new web-based applications on PC, but our mainframe is still old Asia's dinosaur. There are tools now that is available. IBM is making more inroads with their Plumix of connecting Kix with, um, with DevOps-based approaches. Um, but maybe there is a case of kicking off, of replacing them. So if your tools isn't up to, to the speed that you need, you may have to have a look at whether the tool is fit for purpose, which then comes with its own challenges again, because then you need to deploy changes to, to put new tools in your environment. So the big change program, is the DevOps implementation, if you want to speed up, reduce outages, is not just deploy a Docker or a Puppet, it's really rethinking the way the organization is connected to the business and drives value into the business. So I think uh, last question in the interest of time. Um, how does the company advertise for DevOps skills to get that people component in there? People already know the processes. So if they, how, do you, how do you get the skills and capability? And how does the company test, test their CV when they come in? Wow, that's a good, good question. So I mean, if, if, you know, it's, it's a bit like 15 years ago with, with cloud. A lot of people now putting cloud or DevOps on their, on their CVs. Um, I think you really should do two things. First, I think you need to talk to these guys or people who you need to employ and really see that they understand it's not just about the tool side. So, and DevOps is a means to an end. The end is speed and reducing in outages. So if I'm a DevOps engineer and I come with my, my Docker on my backpack, that doesn't mean I'm DevOps. It just means I know Docker. But if I come in and say, well, I want to help you to increase your speed to market because you need to increase your market penetration maybe, um, and that people process and tools aspects to it, uh, you probably stand a better chance to, uh, to have a DevOps-based approach or philosophy. This is the, the existence of the IT for IT value chain and reference model help you sort some of those or position some of those skills. And that's why the description in there is really helpful. So when you look at the value chain, it, it tells you, you know, what are the characteristics or the objectives that you need to focus on these different stages. If you have a developer, that's what he or she needs to think about. Functional and non-functional outages and functional respect, uh, aspects as well and speeds. And then you have the same on the, on the operational guy. So if you employ somebody who runs your operational environment, that he or she understands the, the connection between uh, the people, process and tools side from a IT for IT perspective across the value chain. That's it from the floor. Steve, anything from you? Uh, not in the interest of time. I do have one that I'll uh, take offline, if I may. But, okay. um, <laughs> but no, we must, we must move on. So um, thank you once again, uh, Gunnar Menzel. Thank you. Thank you.